Okay, this is my old Super Nintendo. I have connected it through a PC right now, uh, but that's just because uh, if I connect it directly to my television, then there, there will be like around uh, 200 milliseconds of lag. Actually, I will just turn down the volume a little, so it's easier to hear what I say. Yeah, there we go. And what I'm going to do today is make a review of uh, what is called the Super Everdrive. It's right here. So uh, let's have a look at what this guy can do. We have it here. It uh, basically lets you play games of an SD cards. There's uh, several other manufacturers of um, this idea, but the this one is uh, relatively cheap. It's not the cheapest, but the but it's quite cheap compared to what else is on the market. And uh, it uh, is made very well, so it lets you play uh, all the games without any special fixes for copy protection. And it handles save games really well. Well, let, let's have a look at it. Let's see what happens. So, let's see. If anything... Hmm. Okay. That was a one-off. So, here we have the menus. And uh, let's just start the game because it uh, it keeps the the last game you played in uh, its own flash it has its own storage for the game which you flashes from the SD card so uh, let's see what happens so this is a very well made uh, modification of Super Mario World Well, uh, you can also manage your save games here, so you can save them in a different files. It's not really something I have played with. Get a little information about the device and update uh, the operating system and see some more information about the device. Let's here yeah, it is ROM settings. If you are using some modified ROMs, sometimes it's necessary to change these. But uh, generally all the original uh, games you don't need to do anything, they just works. We can for example take a look at uh, some games here. Uh, dum 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 dum. Let's take uh, Super Mario Kart, if I can find it. Super Mario Kart, there. Then the uh, Super Mario Kart is a very small game. Uh, only half a megabyte, so therefore it, uh, it, uh, it's very fast to start. This time you could multiply by 8 for some of the uh, larger games. And uh, no, I did not uh, complete Super Mario Kart in the very hardest level. I have just taken a save game from an emulator and, uh, and put in. This game uses a special chip called the uh, DSP1 and uh, and I have uh, installed that depending of course what you buy but uh, then it's included or not and if it's not included it's uh, quite easy to uh, modify it and uh, oh just to uh, add it it of course requires that you steal this chip from an existing game oh yeah 
Well, that's the ba that is the only chip it uh, allows you to um, to add. All the other special enhancements chips they don't work. Um, yeah, let's look else. Is there any? Um, what games work? Well, all the European game. I have a European uh, Super Nintendo, and all the European games I have tested works. Uh, no need to make uh, special modifications or anything. Uh, even games like uh, Street Fighter uh, 2 Turbo uh, works fine. Um, and uh, some American games work also fine. Let's see, Super Pang. No, okay, yeah, yeah, let's Uni Racer. Let's take that instead. Um, also works fine, but there are some games that will make check whether you're running uh, 50 hertz or 60 hertz, and the, those games don't work right out of the box. They, those you either have to modify the game or your Super Nintendo to run uh, 60 hertz. And let's just give it a try. This. Um. See, this uh, game was four times larger, so that's why it took a little longer time to start it. Yeah. And again, I have not really played this game, but I have taken a save game uh, from the internet where it has completely uh, finished everything. And I haven't really played this game. <laughs> no, fantastic. Yeah, that's, I think, is enough. So uh, let's look at the hardware, what we have. Um, I will actually, let's just turn off. No, let's just keep the sound. The DSP I uh, stole from a game. Ah. Now it keeps the noise. Just a moment. There we go. The DSP I stole from a game uh, called the uh, uh, Super. No, no, no Super. But just Balls 3D. And uh, I have what's inside the game right here. I bought two copies of it, so. Um, we have it here. I have added the uh, IC holders. I think that's what they're called. So I can uh, take out the the ICs here. And I think I have mounted them correctly. Yeah. This was a ja or is a Japanese game, so I will use uh, my adapter here to play it. Let's see if I can push it in. Just a moment. Yeah. There we go. Have a look, and we will enable the sound again. This is actually quite funny. So we have the game here, which I stole the DSP from, and it's really a crappy game. How can they make sound like this for a game? Okay, but what I basically want to show, and turn off the volume, um, is that should you make this modification yourself, uh, then it doesn't matter which way you place the clock generator. You see here, I will swap it around, and I will just look to make sure I make a good connection. There we go. Okay. Well, that was a bad example. It actually didn't work. Let's just give it a reset. I might need to clean some contacts. So 
So it works even though I have reversed the clock generator. So don't uh, worry about which way that needs to be placed. And I think that's all. Uh, so the conclusion is every original game just works if it's made for your system. Save games work very well. When you reflash a new game, what it does is that it saves the save game in its own um, uh, flash. And um, when you then reflash the flash, then it stores the save game. So next time you flash it, it then uh, restores it. So compared to what else there is, this just works. Yeah, that's all.